decade later is a series that I, for the life of me, cannot keep up with. And I leave it for like three months and then I'm back again with another video. And then I start that video the same way every time. And I say, a decade later is a series I can't keep up with. I think generally um, the audience for these videos isn't as often, isn't often as big as I'd expect. So my eagerness to, you know, follow through with more videos in this series um, isn't quite there. But I think sometimes there are albums that are just so worth talking about in a 10 years later context that I can't not record a video for them. Whether it be the ones that have just held up so well and they're just becoming classics in their own right, in their own genres, in their own way, for whatever reason, perhaps they're just such a unique album for what they were doing at the time, Rusty's Glass Swords, for example, or whether they're just an interesting album to look back at and kind of think, did this age well? Did this not age well? You know, Kanye West and Jay-Z, another example of that. But Childish Gambino's camp, my friend, my friend, Childish Gambino's camp, this right here is, is, is one to talk about. This is a very interesting album, one of the most polarizing albums I think I've ever talked in this series ever. I often come across people in real life um, in real life, it sounds like such like an internet thing to say, but who are, you know, fans of this guy and they actually really love this album. This is an album that seems to be the fan favourite based on what I've seen for Childish Gambino. And yet when you just talk to anyone that seems to ha have sanity, <laughs> no, that's a harsh thing to say, uh, anyone that I just seem to come across generally you know, maybe on music circles, on the internet, something like that. They just seem to think this album is awful. And unfortunately, I will say that I am a person that thinks this album is awful. It's so confusing, this album, whether it be Childish Gambino's or Donald Glover's writing, his lyricism, his weird approach to some of the tracks in terms of how he's rapping and how he's singing, or whether it be the beats. There's just something about this album that just never clicks and never seems to get it right and is just an utter mess from beginning to end. Not even without comparing it to his, to his other albums, by the way, because I would argue that there isn't really one album that sounds like another album in this man's discography. He's pretty versatile, you've got to give him that. Each album is very much their own thing. I can't really say, you know, there's much to dispute with that. So it's not even like, oh, comparing this to Because of the Internet is it just a standalone album. This thing is, is dog shit. Outside immediately sets the tone and sets the biggest issue for the album for me, where you've got the gospelish sort of like church choir singing on the chorus, and then you've got Childish Gambino's delivery on the verses and some of his lyrics as well that are just a bit out of place, a bit silly. Hard to tell if he's taking himself seriously with some of the lines he writes, but they're just the just the mismatch of styles when you hit that chorus compared to what he's giving us on the verses is just indicative of the entire album. Like it just seems like the constant, there's this constant conflict of styles within songs on every track. Firefly has this Kanye-like delivery on the track. Um, uh, definitely feels like he's inspired by Kanye on this one. Just the way he's rhyming in every line uh, kind of ends in like the ooh sound. Just seems like something Kanye would have done back in his prime days. But this is a point where the lyrics are so hit and miss, where it's just so hard to tell what on earth each track is actually even about, or what 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 topics he's trying to present to us because he's just so all over the place with his writing. Um, girls are like, we love you. We got to uh, go to LSU. You got to do a show so we can come and molest you. What are you talking about, man? What are these lines? But then there are lines like this one occasionally where I do find it kind of funny, where he's like, you're a fake fuck, like a flashlight. <laughs> this is the thing though, Donald Glover is a funny guy. There's no denying it. This man is hilarious. Whether it's his stand-up, he can be pretty funny in those stand-ups. Uh, specials that he does. I mean, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of them, but he has some pretty good jokes in there occasionally. His acting, his comedic timing in shows like Community, 
is brilliant. Like, he's one of a kind. There aren't really any characters in comedy TV that really reach the comedic timing levels that he's able to achieve with that. But that's the thing, though. Is it because someone else is writing the lines that he's just able to deliver them with his voice, his facial expressions, just again, his timing, everything like that? Does he need someone else there to sort of pull the strings to make him funny? Because there's so many lines on this album that I think are trying to be funny and I think they come across so poor. Move white girls like there's coke up my ass crack. This is one of the many lines that references some kind of racial woman. <laughs> He's obsessed with race, man. It kind of gets uncomfortable. There's so many lines that reference, you know, black girls, white girls. It's just so obsessive. There's just no need to really box girls like that or people generally. And then the Asian thing that he keeps bringing up just again gets uncomfortable. I, I, we'll get onto some of those later though. I can't get into them right now, man. I've got to prep myself. I've got to mentally prep myself for some of those lines. All the Shine has that mismatch once again. You hit the chorus and it's just some, some kind of like JLS type shit. Um, there's that Mumford and Sons lyric as well that just is hilarious in all the wrong ways. He's trying to do something kind of soft and heartfelt on this track, but I just don't think it really lands. But I think I'd still take it over Bonfire, which I've already mentioned one of the lyrics from. But like this one is once again where the vocal style is just so grim. He sounds awful on this track. It's like, I don't really know what he's trying to do. He's just so like... <laughs> I mean, look, I'm a fan of like harder, heavier vocals in when in certain places when it's done right. And I'm sure there are many people out there that would hear some of those kinds of songs and think the same thing where it just sounds too gritty and grim. But I, I just think there's a way to do it that melds with the track. And I just don't think Donald men ever manages to mesh it in mix it in with the kind of song he's doing. I mean, the beat's so bad, it sounds like a terrible Hudson Mohawk rendition. Like, if the beat was better, maybe it would come together a bit more, but it just sounds so out of place. Like, it, it's awful. Heartbeat's got to be the best example of this, though, where the, the instrumental is just too loud and in your face. Like, it just sounds like the mixing for this track, especially with how the vocals are buried in some of the verses and then on the chorus too. It's like, why, why does it sound like this? That like justice kind of like 2007 type beat should not be taken over the whole fucking song. The chorus is so icky as well. I've seen people say, you know, the chorus is so good. It's so catchy. It's so, it's such a banger. Everything about the track hits so hard. And yeah, I just think the chorus is just so, ugh. Once again, you've got tracks like Backpackers where you get the vocal approach that's just so hard to take seriously. I'm just not here with that. I think once again, again, with the lyrics that are just so all over the place, a lot of race references that I just don't really think land very well. One-liners about like, you know, Nicki Minaj that again, just feel random and just not thought out. And then you've got Kids, which... I can't stand this one, man. What is going on here? The chorus feels like it's trying to be like emotional and heartfelt again with, you know, what it's trying to say. There's some deeper meaning. And then the verses come in and he's just throwing out random lines that make no sense. that don't even match the chorus. He's saying shit like, black or white girls always come with a set of politics. Look, if that's meant to be a joke, dude, where's the 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 joke? That Asian fetish again coming through, that's just so cringe. It comes through again on You See Me, where he, you know, throws out that especially if she is very Asian thing. Like, maybe one time, if you did it in a funny way, I could maybe say, look, he only did it once. Let's just leave it. It might not be a great line, but fair enough. But he does it, like, loads of times. Why do you keep bringing him up? Why again? Why again? Why do you keep doing it? It's not even that funny. Again, if you did it once, maybe it'd be, ha ha, yeah, f funny, funny. Wh why'd you keep doing it? With the awful vocal delivery that he's giving us again on this track, as, with a beat that can only be really described as like as if Bauer, the, the, the electronic producer Bauer, was doing like a rendition of the Jaws theme, which in theory sounds sick, actually. I, I would love to sort of hear him try that. But it's, all, it's, like, he, it's, like, his, it's like the beat is if he, if he did it. 
but it sounded shit. So it's like if you tried doing it and it went wrong, that's the beat. And I'm a big fan of Bauer, but you know, if he's going to get something like that wrong, I don't want to hear it. But yeah, at least I can say Sunrise is all right. It's all right because this track feels like he kind of m mixes all of it together in a way that doesn't sound ear grating or annoying. Maybe there's some one-liners in there that I wasn't really paying attention to that could have been bad, but at least, you know, it sounds okay. The chorus is pretty good. The rapping, you know, sounds better than usual. The delivery is okay. This is the best track easily on the album. I, 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 I do think this one is okay. Now, it's okay, and I'm not going to, you know, rave to it, and I'm not going to rush to hear it again, but I think... You know, it's a bit of a diamond in the rough situation. Now, the final track, though, just has this, like, extended monologue outro spoken word thing that I just find a bit cringe. Like, I just think the whole thing is just really poorly put together. I just don't really know if he's really thought the story out. Is it meant to Is it meant to tie to, to the whole theme of the album? I don't know. But yeah, this is a, a big product of its time for me. I, I feel like... This is very much what an, a, an early 2010s rapper would do, given the spotlight that the internet gave hip hop artists and rappers in the early 2010s back then, would create. This sounds like that. I mean, obviously he was an actor, he was a stand-up comedian as well. He's not just a rapper, but it actually kind of does sound like a, a, a debut album from a, a completely unknown artist coming out of nowhere in the early 2010s, trying to throw in some experimental elements too, with the edgy comedic humour that comes through, a la Tyler the Creator. It's got the overproduction that you'd expect from some, you know, tropes that you heard back in the early 2010s, particularly the track Heartbeat, that sounds very of its time too. There's just really very little about this album that stood the test of time for me. I, I struggle with this one. And the thing is as well is is that look, sure, maybe he's not taking himself too seriously with every lyric that he puts out there, but they don't come across that funny to me. And I think there are other artists out there that are able to sell those kinds of lines in a much better way. But yeah, this is terrible to me, man. This is terrible. I mean, even the short letter home track where he's trying to sing over these sharp strings really show what this album is really, it, just a mismatch of elements that he's trying too hard to do too much and nothing ever gets done well. But uh, yeah, I, I'll never forget it though. It, it, it's a funny listen in the sense that it's just so bad, it's kind of funny at times. It's got that AJR, the click quality that I kind of appreciate about it at points. But um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't make me laugh as much as that one though. So yeah, thank you for watching though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Would love to see what you guys think. I definitely think there's gonna be a, a flood of, of people. Maybe not a flood, maybe like a puddle, maybe like a, a splash of people that will, you know, come to the defense of this album. And I kind of want to see what your reasoning is. So definitely want to see what you guys think. Definitely let me know. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed, please do. Have a good day and goodbye.